Good morning, everyone. My name is Mike Rennick. I'm the senior broker of the team lead of Team Rennick Real Estate Services. We're part of that great Keller Williams on the water family, and I want to emphasize on the water. We have a, this is the, I'm going to call it the wet October 10th edition. Um, we're on the outskirts of Hurricane Michael, um, named appropriately as, as far as I'm concerned. So we'll have to make sure he behaves as he goes up the coast. But I have a live webcam up. You'll see links on my Facebook page, both business and private. Um, it'll give you a shot in real time what's happening here on the island. Part of Longboat Key on the North End is underwater as of last night and this morning. And there's areas up in St. Pete. I know the same thing. So it will give you an opportunity to watch live. And uh, in the commercial, let's talk about the important things and why we're here. We're going to discuss with Mr. Hankin, who I will bring on momentarily, title insurance. What is it? Do we need it? What's it all about? Those kind of things. And my favorite part of this is the uh, bio. <laughs> I'm going to read everything on this thing because Michael does a great job and he deserves the accolades and the notoriety. He's, he's just an all around great guy, a great attorney. Him and his wife are part of Hankin and Hankin and they reach out and they help. I like their entire approach to their business, their things they do in the community and stuff like that. So Michael Hankin is an attorney, as I said, with the law firm of Hankin and Hankin. He practices primarily in the area of residential and commercial real estate transactions. He is an approved agent for Chicago Title Insurance Company, the Interty Titles Insurance Fund, and the Old Republic Title Insurance Company. He's been designated as a board certified real estate attorney. That's the highest level of recognition by the Florida Bar. He regularly represents buyers, sellers, and lenders in all aspects of real property transactions. He grew up in Sarasota. He attended Riverview High School. He went on to Emory University, where he received his Bachelor of Business Administration in Wake Forest University, where he obtained his Juris Doctorate. So if I hit a couple of right buttons here, Michael will be joining us. Good morning, Michael. How are you? Good morning, Mike. Doing well. And yourself? I'm doing outstanding. Are you staying dry today? Doing my best. Doing my best. Hope uh, everybody stays safe up in the panhandle. It's a little scary up there, to say the least. You, you know, what's, what's I don't know what the right verb is. It's definitely not interesting. But what's kind of unique is a year ago, we went through that with Irma coming in here. And we were very lucky. In fact, uh, we were doggone lucky. Let me just say it that way. That was supposed to be a catastrophic Cat 5, and it's supposed to have been, <clears throat> excuse me, a direct hit to Longboat and Sarasota, and we all prepared for it, as, as you remember those days. Um, the folks up in the panhandle, it looks like this is not going to be a miss. Hurricane Michael is forecasted to be a direct hit. We've got some impact here. I've got the live webcam up. People can find that link on the uh, Facebook page. Um, we're seeing high winds and we're seeing um, areas on the north end of the island that actually are underwater right now. So we're, we're getting some effects of, of Michael. What are you seeing more downtown? Uh, downtown, it's kind of gray and overcast, not too much, uh, not too much rain. Um, I, I think the panhandle is going to take the biggest hit, and the high tide we had yesterday with a little bit of storm surge, I think, uh, caused some of that flooding, but hopefully that was the last of it. So our thoughts and our prayers with the folks up in the Panhandle, and we really hope <clears throat> that they're able to come through as well as we came through last year. This is just part of life in, in Florida. But let's let's move on. Let's talk about um, title insurance, what it is, do we need it, all that kind of great stuff. Michael, take it away. Certainly. Uh, title insurance is usually a little bit drier than the weather, so to speak. Um, so what the heck is title insurance? Um, title insurance is a insurance policy, just like any insurance policy, that protects a party from a financial loss related to an ownership interest in property. Um, so typically a buyer encounters this with what's called an owner's policy of title insurance. Um, that's one of the two types of uh, policies. There's also a lender's policy of title insurance. Um, and then in addition to those title insurance policies, there's some additional endorsements which provide some extra coverage. Um, both types of policies, the owner policy and the lender's policy, requires only one premium. And that's unlike most other policies, your homeowner's insurance, your life insurance, most policies require a 
renewing premium each year. So title insurance, one time, typically at the time you buy your house, is uh, the only time that you have a title insurance premium. Um, the title insurance policy um, is a document which guarantees that a party has marketable title, an owner has marketable title to their property. Marketable title simply means property that you can buy or sell without anybody making an objection. So if I own a piece of property and the title is marketable, I can sell it to somebody and they can't make an objection to the condition of the title. Um, some of the things that people commonly do object to are things like encroachment or prior mortgages, oil and gas mineral rights, um, prior documents in the chain of title which weren't executed properly. Um, so there's a lot of potential objections out there. Um, that title policy, when it's issued, guarantees to you that you don't have any of those sorts of issues. And if you do, there's at least a policy that pays you for any loss that you suffer as a result of having any of those objections. Um, and so that's, in a nutshell, what a policy, an owner's policy is. Um, the next question is, do you really need this thing? Um, it's typically the largest or second largest expense associated with your closing. And um, it's one that people want to know, hey, do I really have to pay for this? Um, sadly, if you're getting a loan, the answer is yes, you, you will have to buy it because your lender requires a lender's title insurance policy. Uh, but if you're paying cash, technically it's not required. We still do strongly recommend it. Um, and the reason for it is even if somebody checks your title, does a great job, looks through it, they're human. They're sometimes going to miss something, or maybe they weren't trained properly to know how to find problems. Um, one of the most common things we see are encroachments, homes built into building setback lines. And unfortunately, we find that many title agencies um, just aren't trained in knowing how to identify those and properly object to those. Um, so as a result, those problems, those objections get carried through from one owner to the next owner. And sometimes we'll see a buyer say, hey, this has already been sold three times. They all had clear title. I don't need a title policy. And they go and they try to sell their property. And it turns out they have an encroachment and no coverage. Um, that's typically when we hear from them and then we're trying to then fix their issues and fix their problems. Um, and unfortunately, had they had a title policy, there would be more options available to them. Um, for instance, another file earlier this week, we had a seller who said, nope, I own my property free and clear, don't have any, pro don't have any encumbrances, so uh, no need for a closing statement, I can just sign a deed and get a check for the purchase price. Well, our buyer said, mm, you know what, let's just double check to make sure. They decided to get a title policy. We did a title search and found not one, but two prior mortgages, one of the sellers and one of the prior owner. Um, and so just because a seller gives you a warranty deed and says I have clear title does not mean they have clear title. And unless you have a title policy, you don't have any guarantee of actually having clear title to your property. Um, I buy title insurance whenever I buy property. I recommend it to my clients, my friends. I think it's one, one of the cheapest insurances you'll buy in your life, and two, it protects usually the largest asset you'll buy in your entire life. Let me ask a question. This is my favorite part of the show because we don't rehearse. Michael has no idea other than I ask strange questions. So, and he still comes on the show, so we appreciate it. Michael, let's take an example where a grandfather owns a home. And um, he's very close to his, his granddaughter. So he does a quick claim deed to his granddaughter. Um, she may know about it, she may not, but the, the paperwork goes into a, a dresser drawer. And it's not really filed. So later on, unfortunately, the grandfather passes away the heirs go through probate or they do whatever they have to do and the home is sold. That paperwork isn't found because it wasn't registered. 
And let's say maybe a year later, kids are going through and they're cleaning up and doing things um, in, in another property, and that quick claim deed is found. Is that a legal document that says that that granddaughter owned the, the property back then? So that would be a, a perfect example of somebody making a claim for a matter that existed prior to the, the purchase. And if that person had title insurance and the other heirs made a claim based upon that deed, the title insurance policy would defend that person. Um, we had actually a very similar case um, uh, five or six years ago now where there was a deed that was recorded in the public records. It was done, it was recorded two years after it was signed, um, which normally should give you reason to pause and say, why was this you know, done two years afterwards? And the person to whom the deed was given had then later sold the property. My client was then purchasing the property from that person and elected to get title insurance. We went back and researched and found that that deed in the chain of title had been recorded a week after the person had passed away. And it was very interesting. There was, uh, it creates problems as you can imagine. A deed in order to be effective has to be delivered. And typically deeds aren't delivered after somebody passes away. It's very difficult for dead people to hand things to living people. Um, and so in that case, we wound up raising a title defect, a probate had to be done, and we made sure that our client had good title. Uh, turns out the other kids still thought that their parents had owned this property and thought, you know, oh, we'll just probate it later, but it's in our family. They didn't realize that uh, there was a prior deed that had been done and a transfer had taken place or a, a purported transfer had taken place. So. Um, you know, these, these problems really do arise. You know, one of the most common reasons we hear from people as to why they don't want to buy title insurance is that nobody ever has a title claim um, or that there's never, there's never really title problems. People say title insurance is a scam and it, it really is not. There really are quite often title defects that arise. And I'll tell you, having a title policy a lot of the time can help cure the existing defect. Um, so let me give you an example. If you're a seller and you've gotten a title insurance policy and you have an encroachment um, and your buyer uh, objects to that encroachment and says, hey, I don't want to buy that house. It's three feet into a setback. If your seller has a title insurance policy, a lot of the times that title company will step up and say, hey, we insured this, we made a mistake, a uh, new buyer, we will insure you and give you specific coverage over this encroachment if you'll just go ahead and continue with the purchase. Uh, many times the buyer says, okay, well, if I have specific coverage over this, even though I know it's a problem, if I have insurance over it, I'm okay. If the seller doesn't have a title insurance policy, that avenue to cure that defect isn't available. Uh, or to get insurance over that defect isn't available. Thus, the seller's got one last thing to be able to to address the problem and to continue forward with their closing. As almost every aspect of real estate, title insurance is complex. Um, you know, my personal recommendation as a real estate broker is title insurance is a necessary part of the transaction. You know, we let's be candid here. We all buy insurance with the hope of never having to use it. I insure two automobiles. I am hoping there's never an accident where I need a claim. Insure a condo. I have a personal liability. Um, title insurance when I bought my place. You know, all those things in life insurance, I'm certainly hoping someone doesn't isn't able to use that anytime in the near future. So it's not an expense that we enjoy, but it's something when you look at the, the value of the purchase, the property, be it a condo, a home, a commercial property, a, a vacant land, the expense is it might be worth a couple of dollars to protect it. Does that make sense, Mike? Absolutely. It's, it's typically around one half of 1% and it lasts forever. So 
in my mind, it's the cheapest insurance you can buy that gives you the most coverage. I, I really think you get the most for your money. Real quickly, you can go to a title company that is a national chain and, and they do the service, or a lot of local attorneys offer it. I always lean towards wanting an attorney involved to decipher everything. Your thoughts on um, the value of one versus the other? Without a doubt, I think a buyer should have somebody who has a fiduciary relationship to them checking the title. Um, if you have a national chain title company or any title agency that's not run by an attorney, the obligations to the client are, are much, much different. Uh, for instance, a title insurance agency that's not run by an attorney can find a problem, find an encroachment, insure over it, and not tell you about it because they're hired to write an insurance policy. An attorney whom you hire who finds a problem has to bring that back to you and say, hey, buyer, are you okay with this? This is an issue we found. Let's discuss it. Do we want to object? Do we want to not object? What do we want to do? Um, and they cost the same amount, which most people don't realize. They think attorneys are much more expensive than title companies. In Florida, Texas, many other states, the title insurance rates are, um, are handled by the uh, insurance commissioner. So in Florida, the rates are pretty much uniform throughout the state. Uh, really, the only difference is the closing fee, and that ranges at most $150, $200 between local firms. So for the same price, you can get somebody who represents your interest, who is a fiduciary, who is obligated to look out for your best interest, or you can hire somebody who's hired to just write the insurance policy and doesn't have any sort of fiduciary duty to you. Um, you know, one of the things I think a mark of a good agent is one who recommends an attorney, and I know that sounds a little self-serving, but it means the agent wants their client to have somebody else on their side looking out for them rather than just wants to get the deal done. Uh, in my mind, agents who recommend title agencies are saying, I don't want to deal with any problems on this. I just want this to get closed and I, I don't want problems to be found. Um, where attorneys with a higher standard of care who are recommended are more likely to find problems, but then we're a lot less likely to have problems after the deal which is what our client's best interest is. Um, I have a philosophy with every step, be it title insurance, home inspections, regular insurance, those kind of things. I would rather find out about problems prior to closing when I can help and protect my buyer if I'm on the buy side or the seller if I'm on the sell side. After closing, there's limited steps that we've got. so. I want, we always recommend, we've always believed in this, the best of the best. Um, I, I don't want to hide problems prior to closing. I want everything on the table for a smooth transaction. That's why we're single agents, Eric and I. Um, we do have a fiduciary responsibility to our buyers and our sellers. It's all about doing the right thing and taking the right steps with no shortcuts. That makes sense, Mike? Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. Anything else you'd like to add? You've done a great job, like as you do every time. You keep raising the bar. Uh, no, I uh, I appreciate it. Looking forward to next week, and uh, we'll keep bringing uh, useful information. I have this goal that at one o'clock this afternoon, I'm flying out of Tampa, up to Boston for an outstanding conference. We'll see if Michael's going to let that happen or not. <clears throat> but Mike, thank you. I really appreciate that. We will see you next week. Thanks, Mike. All right, take care. You too.